Welcome to Breadcrumbs. This is the prophetic journal of a girl who's more than happy to eat the crumbs off the master's table. If you're like me, then listen and be encouraged that even in the whispers and mere shadows, our God still speaks and he has a lot to say. I'm sitting on a dock at a cottage and uh, figured here's a good a place as any to talk about the things that the Lord's been speaking about today. <laughs> at Circle Church two weeks ago, we got really quiet and we asked the Lord, what is it you have to say? What is it you're trying to tell us? I began to see a bunch of different peace symbols. It was like a, a fountain of peace symbols. And then I saw two golden banner posts that held up a banner, and the banner, it was not made of fabric, it was actually a real rainbow that was strung up between the two posts. And I knew what the Lord was speaking was, people of peace. My people are a people of peace, and I have been pondering it ever since. It immediately made me think of the passage in the Bible that speaks about how the people will be crying peace, security, but there will be no peace and security, but then destruction will come. And how today people are calling for peace and security. They're demanding safety and security. <laughs> There's a puppy chasing some ducks right now. And then I was thinking about how the definition that the world gives for peace is getting along or not ruffling any feathers. If you look up the word peace in the Strong's Dictionary, you'll see that the primary meaning for the word peace, it actually means to complete or to make whole. That's a really different way to look at it. There is a time for the people of God to be peaceable. I believe that's what was meant when God called the people to go and live as captives in Babylon and to be good neighbors. There is a time for that. But in these last days, the people of God are going to cause war wherever they go just by walking into a room, just by standing still in Christ. They will be a terrible offense to the world around them. The world will not feel a sense of peace when the kids of God are walking around. Just this morning, with peace on my mind, I turned to 2 Kings 9 and I read a passage about Jehu that I must have read a dozen times before, but never once have I realized that Jehu had something to teach me about peace. He's just been anointed to be a king with a mission. And with the oil still coating his head, Jehu hitches up horse and chariot and he starts to ride like a madman straight for his enemies. And believe it or not, it's a peace mission he's on. The passage says that the intensity with which he's riding towards that city gets noticed by the watchman and by the enemy king himself. A guard gets sent out to meet Jehu as he's riding towards them. And he pulls up to ask Jehu, are you coming in peace? But Jehu responds, what do you have to say about peace? Get behind me. And then another guard comes, do you come in peace? And again, Jehu says, what have you to do with peace? Get behind me. And then finally, the king himself comes to Jehu, and he asks, Have you come in peace? And Jehu says the most interesting thing. He says, How can peace exist when the evil, the disgusting evil that you are allowing your mother to carry out is still happening here? And then he takes out his bow and arrow, and he shoots the king between the shoulder blades. And then he keeps on riding to go and find Jezebel herself. She sees him coming, and she goes up into a tower, and she calls out from the window, Is this peace, Jehu? King murderer? And Jehu hollers up to anyone who will listen, Whose side are you on? Who is with me? If you are, fling her down. And they do. And there you have it. Jehu's peace mission resulted in the death of two very evil people. And here is what is so very obvious. They're defining peace one way, and then this man of God is defining it in an entirely different way. When the guards and the king 
and evil Jezebel are using the word peace. What they're saying is, now Jehu, you seem to have fire in your eyes, but concessions can be made. Surely you're coming to be tolerant with us. And you can just turn that frothing horse right around and head in the other direction so that status quo is maintained. Nothing has to change. We can do us and you can do you, boo-boo. Clearly, that is not how Jehu is defining peace. Something was really, really wrong. Something was terribly broken. And he was riding towards the city to make it whole again. And the way to make it whole again was that some evil people had to die. Systems of evil had to be ended. As Baal and Asherah worshippers, thousands and thousands of babies were being slaughtered on altars. That had to stop. And it wasn't going to stop by reasoning it out and negotiating. It wasn't going to stop by making room for both sides. It wasn't going to stop by having some peace talks. Do you catch what I'm saying? The gods of Baal and Asherah, they've returned. I don't believe they ever left. Not fully. But I believe that they are going to be given a place, a public place of honor in the days ahead. I believe the days are returning where there will be altars in the streets where people can offer their children to the gods because they've been made to believe that they must appease them to stave off horrors that they deem far greater than the sacrifice of a beloved child. To be people of peace will be to cut off evil with the sword. Over and over again, the book of Revelation talks about how those who conquer are the ones who are going to stand they're going to stand. And so I believe that being people of peace, it's going to look like refusing to bow, much like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It's going to look like rebellion, for sure. Just one without sharp, pointy weapons. It'll look like saying no to the mandates of the rulers. And yes, ever yes, always yes to the mandates of God. It'll look like carrying out the specific instructions of the Holy Spirit, even though that looks anything but peaceable. Even though the world says that it's the opposite of love and that it makes you a dangerous rebel. It means walking around in the world holding a banner. Let's just say it's a banner with golden posts and a rainbow spanning the distance between the two. It's proclaiming that we stand and we fight under a powerful covenant a covenant with the God of the universe, and He is the one that determines the conditions. He is the one that encircles us with an unbreakable promise. We stand for Him, under Him, in Him. You can do your worst to us, and we will stay standing. O people of peace, let the peace of the Anointed One rule in your hearts. Colossians 3 O people, of peace. There's a list of our weaponry in Ephesians 6, and one of them is a sharp pointy thing. It is a sword. Is it to lop off the heads of our enemies? No, it's to stand. It says so that we may stand. If you want to interact with any of these episodes, if the Lord has spoken to you about similar things, then I really want to hear about it. This podcast has an Instagram account over at Mildly Prophetic. I'll put that in the show notes. If you hop over there, you can share the things you've seen and heard. You can ask me questions. Basically, you can add your breadcrumbs to mine. And if we gather them all up, then what a feast it'll be.